if you were, let's say if you're Samsung, right? Wouldn't it make sense you make the phone and you actually make the CPU, right? But your yield rate, meaning you couldn't really get the packaging right, meaning how these CPUs are made. And the reason why they call them chips is because they're made on this huge cylinder, this round, oh, there's a whole bunch of CPUs that are, that are manufactured on a wafer, which is why they call them a chip. Um, and there's, I don't know, probably a few hundred CPUs on this round disc. That's how they manufacture them. And then off that disc, then they cut out each individual CPU. Well, Samsung's had an issue with their yield rate, meaning if there's 300 CPUs on that disc, on that wafer, Samsung could only really make, only afford, could only reach like a yield rate of 30% on that whole, on that whole wafer of all those CPUs, meaning only three out of 10 CPUs out of those 300 CPUs would actually physically work properly, pass quality control inspection, and would actually go into phones. So that means they would essentially dump and or try to recycle what they could, but seven out of 10 of those CPUs on that wafer. TSMC, a competing, see Samsung not only designs the chips, they manufacture the chips. Apple will design the chip, TSMC will make the chip. Google will design the chip, TSMC make the chip. Uh, MediaTek will design the chip, TSMC will make the chip. Samsung does both. Samsung will design the chip and make the chip. And they've had an issue with their yield rating, meaning once you really get close to 70%, it's kind of like in school, right? The passing grade is a 70. If you got a 69, you fail. If you get a 70, you pass, right? Pass fail rate, same exact rating pass fail rate for the CPU manufacturers. If you can get the yield rate, meaning if you can get seven out of 10, if you can reach that seven out of 10 CPUs on this disc, on this wafer are good and will go into production, that's considered a success. TSMC, so the next generation of CPUs is a two nanometer node. It's the race for the two nanometer node, meaning the foundation the chip sits on is very small, two nanometers. Every year it gets a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. TSC is currently trying to get to a 70% yield rate. They're at about 60% yield rate for the two nanometers. You'll see the two nanometer node. You'll see the Snapdragon. I believe the 8 Gen 2 will be on a two nanometer. And the Exynos 2600 next year's Samsung flagship CPU will be on the two nanometer. Well, that's the problem with Samsung. And that's the reason why... They can't put every Samsung phone with a Samsung Exynos chip because their yield rate is not that high. They simply can't produce enough CPUs to put in all their phones. So that's why they have to reach out to Qualcomm to, uh, uh, put, their C to put Qualcomm CPUs, to put Snapdragon CPUs in this Samsung phone. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Samsung, their dream is to be not necessarily like Apple, but when I say like Apple or like iPhone, I mean produce a phone or produce mobile devices. In every single mobile device they sell, no matter what model it is, they want a Samsung Exynos CPU in that device, like Google is gonna do for their mobile devices with the Tensor G5 CPU. Apple does with their Bionic chips, right? Xiaomi is doing going to do with their X-Ring CPU. All Xiaomi devices in the future will have a Xiaomi CPU. Samsung, for them to succeed in the future, this is imperative. I think for the Samsung mobile division, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about their, their washer and dryer division. <laughs> I'm not talking about... Um, what else does Samsung do? Their, their, their robot vacuums. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about mobile division, their phones, tablets, um, computers know because they have a deal with, with Intel for their CPUs, for their, for their laptops. But every phone, every tablet for Samsung Mobile, which is a division of Samsung, for them to succeed, for them to make enough revenue to satisfy the board of directees, they need they need to put Exynos CPUs in every phone. 
and they're gonna make an enormous push. In fact, they've already started making that push. That CPU warehouse I told you that was right down the highway from here, they had not planned on that being a two nanometer manufacturing plant. It is enormous. They did not plan on that. They were gonna do larger four nanometer and five nanometer chips for other, uh, for other industries, not just the phone industry. Well, Samsung said, uh-uh. We're going to turn that, and they just recently made this decision. We're going to turn that new warehouse, that new fabrication plant over here. That's going to be our latest and greatest manufacturing plant for two nanometers. So they made a shift in their, in their strategy. And get this. News came out yesterday. They're shooting for the stars, but I like it. And, and I, I like it. Every S26 series device is gonna have an Exynos CPU. Now, that may be reaching for the stars, like I said, but at the moment, as we sit here on July, excuse me, on June 23rd, 2025, Samsung has set a goal, every S26, S26 Plus and or S26 Edge and S26 Ultra sold around the world, they're aiming to have an Exynos CPU in there. Now, Will they achieve that goal? I have no idea, but they are going to strive for that. Now, is it possible that their yield rates may not be high enough to where, damn it, we're gonna have to out, we're gonna have to pull in some other, we're gonna have to source some more CPUs. Let's reach out to Qual. I don't know their business dealings with Qualcomm. I don't know how, I don't know their contract with Qualcomm. Maybe they'll have to do a split for the S25, excuse me. The S26 Ultra, I believe, will be split between the Exynos CPU 2600 and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 2. But every S25 and S25 Plus and or S25, Jesus Christ, every S26 and S26 Plus and S26 Edge, next year's flagship S26 and S26 plus and or edge will have a uh, uh, Exynos 2600 CPU. The S26 Ultra is going to have split Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 and Samsung Exynos 2600 CPU because that is their plan. Sorry, it's a mouthful, but they have set up a task force to make this happen. Again, it is imperative for their mobile division to succeed because here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. Samsung's in business, all right? What do you, what's the main point in business? To make money, right? That's the whole point in business. Well, generate revenue, especially when you're on a massive level like Samsung where you're a publicly traded company, like you have board of directors, you have certain numbers you gotta hit every quarter and or every fiscal year under a lot of stress. The reason why Samsung is pushing so hard to implement their own CPU to get this right is because the Qualcomm Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 2 is going to be 30% more expensive than the previous year. And guess what? The current Snapdragon 80 Elite was 30% more than the previous year. So in two years, you see the prices shoot up for Samsung using these Qualcomm chips for Snapdragon. Over two years, the price has gone up 60%. That trend is going to continue. So the Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 3 will probably be somewhere around 30% more than the 8 Gen 2. And you can see these numbers, these numbers piling up at some point. So this cuts into your revenue because Samsung can't continually increase the price of the S25 series, S26 series, S27 series 30% every year, right? Now, I know, it, I know it doesn't equal that, but I mean, it may be an extra 50 bucks every year. They might, but at what point are people just not going to buy the phone because it's too expensive? Well, another way to cut down on costs is to, manu is to manufacture your own parts. Make the phone yourself. It costs a lot less than to have to outsource and go buy parts for your phone. So this is the whole reason why Samsung is trying to get this the, the new Exynos line, these, this new Exynos CPU 
in these Samsung phones. It looks good for the company because you can really compete. Say, well, Apple's got their own phone and their own CPU. Well, guess what? We got our own phone and CPU. Google's got their own phone and CPU. We got our own phone and CPU. Xiaomi has got their own phone and their own CPU. Well, guess what? We too have our own phone and our own CPU. You see where I'm getting at? Now, we're not going to talk about where that leaves Qualcomm because it looks like Qualcomm is going to be pinched out of the mobile division. Um, but that's another story for another day. Maybe we can talk about that tomorrow. Now, just a little... Qualcomm sees this coming, and Qualcomm has already made changes just in case this happens, but another day, another story. So it looks like the Samsung at the moment is shooting for all S26 and whatever. I say S26 Plus and or S26 Edge because we don't know if Samsung's going to keep the Plus model or keep the Edge model. We heard that they had plans to push out the Plus model and bring in the Edge, but the Edge has not sold well at all. So I don't know if that's still on the table. They may just scrap the Edge series old, but you will see the small S26 and the medium S26 come with Exynos worldwide. And the S26 Ultra will be split between Exynos and Qualcomm. Just, you know, be a, a region specific uh, CPU and or device. So that's, that was big news today.